so let's talk about the PvP builds I come up with. First of all, um, we are using Blade Dance, Fluing Strike, Zephyr Surge, Squall and Vintage. The important thing here is untargetable skills like um, this one with this essence and Zephyr Surge. Once again, you are untargetable while using it. Fluing Strike, you are not untargetable while using this, but it has a stun, so perfect. So with Blade Dance, we have a stun too, but this is a two-faced skill. You throw your blade and then you activate it again. It is very good and easy to use if the enemy is a little further away and if he's not moving too much. It is pretty easy to use, but when they get close, you kind of need to spam it, but it works. Uh, if there is something to be improved in this build, that might be Blade Dance, but it works fine for now. I think it is quite fun to use. And Flowing Strike is here as a dash, plus the important thing, uh, it increases our damage, plus this skill can be used while suffering from total loss of control. Let's say you are feared, you are CC, I mean you are stunned, you are freezed, something like that, or knockback effects. So you can just dash with that, dash with this skill, and you are immune to those effects for 1.5 seconds. So basically this is our CC immunity skill, and this is a must have in my opinion. Um, other than that, it deals the damage and stuns, which is perfect. And we have Zephyr Surge. It works as a dash with this essence. I will show all of the essences in a minute, so don't worry. Uh, this is like seven-sided strike from Monk. You just you become untargetable and dash at the enemy, which triggers our set items. And then you basically deal damage. Skull is like Mystic Strike from Monk, but better, because you are untargetable while doing this. And you move with Zephyrs too, so you can you are able to deal damage uh, enemies in your pet with that. So it's a really good skill with this essence. Other than that, I have Windage as my primary. This one looks cooler. But I think this is better for PvP. At least it looks like that for now. So I have an essence that um, deals extra damage plus shatters enemy armor too. So we try to hit a couple of times the enemy with our primary attacks to apply this. Uh, let's say debuff. Other than that, every 3 seconds you can dash to the location, dash to your target. Just like Fist of Thunder. That's why we have Vintage. And when it comes to the set items, there are a couple of options, in my opinion. I am using, right now, I am using two piece Mountebank, two piece Barons to increase the duration of the stuns, since we have a good amount of stuns with this build. And of course, we have four pieces of Gloom. So. What you can do is, you can play with 4-piece Gloomskite and 4-piece Mountebank, that's an option. Actually, you can play with 4-piece Gloomskite and 4-piece Barons, because 4-piece Barons effect is pretty nice, it increases the damage of your target, which is nice, and it increases the damage of your target for everyone in your team. So that's nice too, but I like to keep Mountebank for a little bit extra shields and safety. I really like Mountebank set. If you feel a little crazy and if you maybe you are high resonance, you can use 4 piece Urge and 4 piece Gloomskite. Uh, I think Blade Dance triggers um, V2s. I tried that, but I'm not sure it should trigger it. And set items looks like that. Usually you can go for 4 piece Gloomskite and 4 piece Mountebank. That should be enough, or you can remove 2 piece Mountebank and use 2 piece Barons. But if you have better ideas to use, let me know in the comments. And when it comes to set uh, legendary items, let's take a look all of them. Armored Eyes for the headpiece. So Blade Dance now throws your edges, impaling them into the first enemy they strike, damaging and stunning them. Your edges remain embedded in the target for a short, uh, sorry, short while. And allowing you to activate the skill again to dash behind the target, damaging all enemies along your path. So it is a pretty long timer, so you don't have to 
use it right away and the distance is pretty good pretty good but definitely it requires some practice it's not the easiest skill to use in my opinion at least from my experience and for the chest we have zephyr guard so this one flowing strike now conjures a zephyr that slashes and stuns this is the stuns uh, essence for flowing, flowing strike that's why we are using it and shoulders probably this is the most important one safe borders flowing strike can now be used while suffering from total loss of control and knockback effects making you immune to their effects for 1.5 seconds and we have two stacks of this so you can use it back to back and whenever you need it basically it's gonna make you immune to cc which is pretty important really good for the pants we have safe fairest throws Flowing Strike also grants you 10% increased damage for 3 seconds. This can trigger V2s too if you are using V2s. And for the main end, we have Harmonious Castle. Skill now makes you untargetable and causes you and your Zephyrs to dash forward, damage enemies on your pets. This is our dash skill. Second main end is Fiend Fill. Vintage becomes empowered every 6 seconds, causing your next attack to unleash a piercing wind that slices through enemies, dealing damage and shattering their armor. This is the important part causing them to take 10% increased damage for 3 seconds, which is pretty nice. And for the first offense, we have Semillion Windbrush. Blade Dance maximum charges increased by 1. And for the second offense, we have Miss Whisperer. Um, this is the essence for Zephyr Surge. Zephyr Surge now causes you to become untargetable and dash at an enemy. Dash at an enemy, unleashing a series of rapid strikes against them with each Zephyr each Zephyr consumed grants in addition strikes. So this is our damage skill. And basically that's the build. Uh, for Reforge bonuses, I am still using Barrier. But you can try different stuff. Ancestral properties use Stun one. That should be good. For Curse properties, don't use one. This is um, from another build. You can use Detested or Lashed. Lashed might be good actually. And legendary gem ad advices. I mean, pain clasp, mother's demand, starfire, bottle lock, blood socket, seeping bile, or wiper's bite. Other than that, you can use rolling for sure. I'm using curse link. I think it is cool since we are a melee class and we are getting close to the enemies. It works. It is decent. But you can use something else instead of that. Not that. Uh, not that big deal. For example, Spiteful Blood can be good for defensive purposes. Probably I will make a detailed Legendary Gem video for Tempest, so I'm not going to get into that too much. But I want to talk about the Paragon setup too, which I think is pretty important. So you basically unlock everything like this. And I made something for myself from Brawler. I used to use Warden instead of Gladiator all the time and I'm still doing that. After I, after unlocking everything, I choose these ones. Defender of the of Sanctuary, Heavy Armor, Finishing Touch. I think Finishing Touch is really good for this class. It gives you that extra damage when you need it. I think like this is one of the most important bonuses you can get from this. Uh, your size and maximum life, I think this is pretty nice too. And chase down. And these are your bonus attributes. So, new Paragon system is quite simple. Like I said, just uh, unlock everything like this for PvP setup. And then ch I choose these ones. I think this setup works pretty well, but you can just read whatever you I mean, you can just read these and choose for yourself. Shouldn't be a problem. But I tried this setup even with Master Level 1. It was doing a decent job, actually. And I think that's all for the PvP build. And there will be more guides for Paragon and the Tempest. So keep in touch. Thank you for tuning in. Alright, video is done. Thank you for listening through that.